Florida. Now this is something we say all the time. That is a road and we say do not drown. Turn around as you saw a car there trying to navigate the deeply flooded roads in that area. Uh, disappointing to see so yes. dangerous to yeah. do as we learned here the hard way back during the great floods here in the Midlands. But thank you for joining us today for Friends at Five. So much to get to. I'm Andrea Mock and I'm Darcy Strickland. You can see the devastation behind us in Florida. We're talking about Hurricane Ian and the impact it could be having on the Midlands. Chief Meteorologist Efren Afonte is standing by now in the Weather Center with the very latest Efren. Ladies, we just literally got the update from the National Hurricane Center about two minutes ago. Tropical Storm Ian this morning is now again a Category 1 hurricane with wind sustained at 70 mi 75 miles an hour, moving north-northeast at about 10. Its position is still well south of Charleston by about 240 miles, give or take. But again, the strength has gotten back up to a hurricane. All indications now it's going to continue moving through the southeast Atlantic until it gets close enough to Charleston. And right now it looks at, th at least at this point that it may be making landfall somewhere in Charleston or Georgetown County coastline on Friday afternoon with winds possibly of 80 miles an hour still as a category one and making its way through. Let me put that back and making its way through South Carolina, but the trajectory more towards the eastern portions of the Midlands into the PD. Nevertheless, what we've got is that that line puts us under the now tropical storm warnings continuing until Sunday at two o'clock for all of the Midlands, most of South Carolina, and now an upgraded hurricane warning for the entire South Carolina coastline. In addition to that, the National Weather Services have issued a flood watch for pretty much most of the Midlands, but if you cut it right down the middle, about two thirds of the eastern half of the eastern portions of South Carolina is under this flood watch until Saturday morning. Now quickly what we have right now, it's overcast over the city, 68 degrees, winds out of the northeast, gusting to 29 miles an hour. And what we're looking at is as we get into the evening, we'll start seeing some showers, but going into the morning, we're looking at downpours, winds gusting up to 40 miles an hour, a low of 59 with a high of 63, more downpours throughout the day and into the evening, winds out of the north 30 at times gusting to 55. And then as we get into tomorrow night, we're still going to have a lot of rainfall as it's still going to stay windy. But the one thing that we are watching, ladies, is that there is going to be a lot of rainfall. That's one of the two cheap things that we're watching very carefully over the next 48 hours. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And Efren, if we can see that map one more time um, where we were looking at exactly where we expect it to make landfall and then explain to our viewers, um, if you can, how, how that's going to differ. How will that change things for us here in the Midlands if it makes landfall more near Charleston or if it makes landfall more near Myrtle Beach? That's a great question because people are going to be asking that. What we know is that, let me give you the other side, what we know is that as it stays out in sea, it's going to very likely stay as a Category 1 hurricane and potentially make that landfall by Friday. But the key thing is that notice the cone of uncertainty. This could be pro you know, projected anywhere from Folly Beach all the way up to, say, uh, 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 Folly Beach. Not Folly Beach, I'm sorry. Um, uh, areas around Myrtle Beach. Whether it's a Category 1 or a tropical storm, it's still going to be intense. But you notice the cone does cover from the low country to the Grand Strand. The computer models, though, are indicating that it is likely going to take that trajectory. And even though it slides a little bit more to the east, we're still going to feel the impact of the wind and the rain. Now, we may not have the intensification of tropical or hurricane force winds. The Midlands, though, is going to be very windy. That's why we're projecting right now that at times... Not all the time, but at times, tomorrow morning through early Saturday morning, we could be looking at wind gusts of potentially 55 miles an hour. Quick question, Efren. We currently are under a tropical storm warning. People are wondering what that <laughs> means in layman's terms. It's a very good question again, because a lot of people are going to be asking that. A tropical storm warning means that the conditions are right solely about the wind, that we could be experiencing a minimum of 40 mile an hour sustained winds. It's just constant winds. Now we could have wind gusts of 55 miles an hour, but a wind gust usually is calculated by how strong that wind is in a three second interval. But the tropical storm warning means that it is favorable for a lot of areas to have constant 40 mile an hour winds for a considerable amount of time.
Yeah, we know those sustained winds can certainly be dangerous. Thank you, Efren. We just can't hear enough from you today. Honestly, we'll check back in with you in just a little bit. But